Hi, I'm Mihata, and this is the summary of my Ethereal Items Only Assassin. It's hardcore and I'm really excited. And I've cheated only once, not with a debt. I'll tell you about it later on. Stay with me. The rules for this one are pretty simple. I can use only Ethereal Items. I can use... I can start using Burst of Speed. But then, when Fate is available, I will use only Fate. In BT Diablo, there is a recipe where each crafting could be made ethereal. So I plan to use this one a lot. Okay, 30 minutes, no ethereal weapon. I think I'm done with this idea to try to find the weapon. Time to start punching. see me coming okay normal difficulty recap this is my assassin called hollow woman level 40 she uses only ethereal items that's why she has no gloves strength in shamshir a little bit of rest and mana stolen per hit Belt, heavy belt, boots with faster and walk, attack rating a little res, a little res, more res, extra gold, and very poor shield. So far I'm mostly blade sin, where I rely the most on blade sentinel and blade shield. I used fade, which pushes my resists really well and it is for style reasons maybe the highlight of this uh, recap will be socketing this chain armor so i can get my first stealth insane gloves these were my first safety gloves that i rolled in bt diablo knockback is not guaranteed on safety gloves so rolling knockback as a blade scene on an ethereal items only playthrough, insane. 18 durability, I think I'll get any of these. And I lost only two durability, and I have pastor and walk and repair durability. Now, okay, I can up these. And become a Pixin. Let's try. Okay. I was able to kick with them. So for a part of this playthrough, part of the Nightmare playthrough, I was able to play Dragon Tail Assassin, which is one of my favorite builds in the game. And thanks to the repair durability, I had to not worry about losing the boots i switched back to using blades in act 4 because i started losing durability on my stealth and my rhyme shield because i was in front of the fight i was up in front and was that was not sustainable the most interesting thing in the nightmare section of this run was my Hellforge, which was a lemon, and this will allow me to make myself a treachery or insanity, which will boost my skills and my, my resists like uh, by a lot. I've just beaten Bale on Nightmare difficulty for 12 hours and 5 minutes, more or less. And I did that using mostly blade skills. I also imbued this claw, this ethereal claw, and this one rolled pretty nice. I can upgrade it to the exceptional version and I think it will surpass the battle hammer.
So, how did the hell part of my playthrough go? At first I expected my damage to fall off of a cliff when I moved to insanity. I did not expect to be this well prepared with my gear. I even skipped the Den of Evil quest and moved forward in Act 2. Luckily I was able to save Kane, but without taking too many risks. I intentionally skipped the tower completely and again found the Charis' Malice by chance. And kill Tandariel. Similar thing in Act 2. I completely skipped the Radaman quest because of the burning archers, those can be deadly. And the other quests are rather required. A very uh, tough point were a Arcane Sanctuary, uh, where being a physical damage character was not helping at all. I gave it a try. I did something similar when I played the Angelic set playthrough, where I tried to beat Hell Arcane Sanctuary with Blades, with Blade Sentinel and Blade Fury, and failed there. So for this playthrough, for the Ethereal only items, I respect into a Lightning Trap Sim. So that's kind of a cheating, that's on the edge. Feel free to judge me. I respect into lightning traps, as lightning traps completely obliterates the arcane sanctuary. And when I killed the summoner, I continued act 2, I finished act 2, I killed Duriel with my lightning traps. But, light, but lightning damage just does not work in act 3. That's the immune to lightning damage uh, act. So in order to move further with the playthrough, I had to respect back into physical, into traps. <clears throat> so that's, that's the cheating I did to complete this playthrough. Without this switcheroo between blades in lightning traps in, and again blades in this this would have ended before that. Diablo has its own variation of 
22 Nights of Terror for Diablo 2. Instead of daily buffs, there are holiday gifts. They drop similar like runes in insanity. I was running my ethereal assassin in hell difficulty act 3 and I got my first holiday gift. Two minutes later I found my second gift and this time I got an um rune, a few port runes and a few perfect sapphires. These holiday gifts are raining. Let's see what's inside this one. A lemrun. Pretty cool. Act 4 was okay. I did all the quests. Israel was very easy to find. I I was able to negate to move around the the souls in planes of despair. Is that the name? Anyhow, <clears throat> so I completed all the quests. I did not need the Hellforge for for any runes. I had all the runes that I needed. The lemon rune that I got from my nightmare Hellforge was everything I needed. The gifts helped a lot. Let's make sure I don't put Grand Vizier out. And I'll have to beat him with the Venom. Yay, another holiday gift. I think this is my fifth gift the holiday gift okay soul runes iron runes let's see if lord disease will fall on my face this time and done Insane crowd control. Ooh! I keep on forgetting the order. And I'll have to clear all of them. Okay. The vector is down. Can I... Get over here to kill all of you? Okay, let's... Try to survive without the resists. And done. Marchers. Ah, I will save and next. This is already better composition. Let's see. Oh, okay, cool rats is better. Let's get rid of the quill rats. And the enslaved will be easy. Okay, Shank has come forward. How convenient. Lingers with Might Aura he is a recipe for a disaster. Knowing that this is a hardcore, I'm so patient and so careful moving forward and clearing minions and everything. And in Act 5, I skipped Anya. When I got to Crystalline Passage, I just 
turned to the left and went out and forgot about those. with faith okay come on come on come on come on come on over here Ooh. I look down is a big deal okay and none of you is immune to physical thank you game pillar the column? Oh my god. <clears throat> I've beaten Hell Ancients on Hardcore. First try. Like the first hero getting. Well, um. Okay, relying on the Venom and Holy Freeze will take some time. And the Bale Waves were challenging enough, or actually the fifth Bale Wave was challenging enough. The other four were just, just disappeared. A step back, please. This clock of shadows is the best skill in the game and I was able to just throw several blade sentinels and wait for them to kill all the minions. Like this. Insane! This run is absolutely insane. Things will get a lot dicey now. Let's run! The knockback will be the deciding factor. You look like the shadow. Never mind, I'll eat you. Ooh, you were the real one. So, hell difficulty, ethereal items only, assassin, hardcore. Hello woman, level 81. Thank you, thank you for your applause. Not necessary, but I like it. So, it's been just above 19 hours, but it was worth it. That's my first hardcore playthrough in BT Diablo. Actually, in Diablo, ever. A lot of strength, a lot of dexterity. The strength is for the runic talents, the dexterity, so I have some chance of block. The attack rating is average, or bail, it's okay, 50% and 64, just below 1000 life, it's doable. Runic talents bulwark, mainly for the damage reduction percentage. But the other mods are also pretty decent. Insane gloves. These were my first safety gloves that I rolled. I've said it over and over. In BT Diablo, knockback is not guaranteed on safety gloves. So rolling knockback as a blade scene on a ethereal items only playthrough. Insane.
just safety belt, nothing too interesting. Treachery, mainly for the 15 points in Fate. The Venom was also good, I was able to kill some immune to physical monsters. Pretty good amulet. Fire resist, safety ring for the damage and flood damage and magic damage reduction. Pretty nice boots. And a rhyme shield for the cannot be frozen mostly. On swap, I have two all skill levels. These are caster claws that I used mainly for to summon my shadow master. Skills 1 point wonders, 20 points into shadow master, and the last point in clock of shadows. And I was blades in for the majority of this run the holiday gifts basically they allowed me to upgrade my mercenary let me show you him as well treachery life bulwark crafted blood war pike ethereal dual leech this is actually a pretty good ring i think i got it from ormos faster hit recovery 37 it rolled pretty nice, unfortunately. I lost the durability, so I put it on the mercenary. That's the reason I don't use it. And he needed it more. And more damage. So Emilio does very well as well. Almost 5k damage with Holy Freeze for additional crowd control. His advanced sheet, 15 Lifestone per hit, damage reduction 25, again the bulwark and the fate, replenished life, increased attack speed, which reminds me to show my advanced sheet, a lot of damage and magic damage reduction flat, again this is what kept me alive for the majority of this run, little to no magic find, knockback, and the rest of the stats are not something I planned and I looked for. They are what they are. The resists are pretty nice with the 30 fire res that I put in the weapon. If you're interested, you can also check on the screen a couple of other very interesting playthroughs that I did. I've already mentioned the Angelic set playthrough that I also did as an assassin. And also, I really like the Rainbow Barbarian playthrough that I did. And thank you so much for watching this playthrough. I really enjoyed that you came along with me. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.